Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the April 18th Washougal City Council meeting. I ask that you please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the Constitution of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jennifer, could you call the roll, please? Councilmember Coaston? Here. Councilmember Shoemaker? Here. Councilmember McDaniel? Here. Councilmember Delavar? Present. Councilmember Greenlee? Here. Councilmember Morris? Here. And Councilmember Russell? Here. Thank you. Do we have any amendments to the agenda this evening? Okay. Seeing none, do we have any correspondence? Just the proclamation? Is that okay. where that would fit now? Uh, I'll just do that in the mayor's report. Okay, uh, then no. Is that a, is that a, uh, I think that's one that we've copied everybody on yeah. previously. Uh, we're at that point in the start of the agenda for any public comments, those members of the public that would like to address the council. Yes, Tom. Um, I was being driven home from uh, church uh, Sunday night, or well, Saturday night. We got caught by that light on uh, River Road at the overpass, and the lady that was driving me says that often when she's out really late at night, she ends up sitting there for five or ten minutes, and there's not a car in sight. She was wondering if it would be possible to switch it to continuous blink during the night hours so that people could drive on through if, or, you know, just stop for an instant and then go on if there was no one out there. I told her I would mention it to council. Thank you. Oh, you by the way, I'm Tom Anderson, 740 East Street. I'm sorry. Thanks, Tom. Any other members of the public? Uh, Don Bolin, 32934, Southeast 20th Street. And you almost lucked out tonight, except I saw on the agenda you had something about ethics, so I thought I'd stop by. <laughs> um, and I won't reanimate my opinion. I think it's, uh, but I guess the thing, I, I had a couple things I was going to say. If you uh, feel that you really need a statement, I think, and I think you're looking at it, uh, I would look at what the state has to say and see if that covers what your desires are. Uh, because I would think, I know an oath of office it certainly has. Uh, so that's the only thing I would say. But the other thing I feel is, uh, and maybe it's the past is, is this as important as some other things you have to do? Uh, one of the things I've been asking for, and I, I think I'm, I may be alone, but occasionally, is a mission statement as to what the real job description is for the council members. In fact, I think if you're going to do uh, an oath of office, uh, that might be uh, something to have in your hand. The other thing I would recommend, though, if, if you're going to go down this path and decide to build one that's different than the state or whatever it is you come up with, when you look at the composition of the committee, I would like to see it two-thirds two of it be uh, the people you represent. I would not like it, city, like it to be exclusively of the council or the city employees. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Any other folks in the public that would like to address council? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to consent agenda. What would council's wishes be with the consent agenda this evening? Mr. Mayor, I request that items number one and four be taken from the consent agenda. Yep. 
Mr. Mayor, I ask unanimous consent that items two and three, the workshop minutes for April 11th and the regular AP claims be approved. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Uh, item number one, council minutes of April 4, 2011. Michael? Yes, Mr. Mayor. With regards to uh, this, uh, the council um, minutes from April 4th, I wanted to correct something which may seem a little odd, but I uh, did a little research on this. <clears throat> from my understanding, if there's an absence of a quorum, there are only three actions that the council can take, and that is to adjourn, to recess, or take measures to obtain a quorum. And as such, I would like to amend the um, minutes to reflect that once the quorum was lost, the meeting was adjourned, and delete council comments. So I move to delete the council comments. Could you explain that again? Sure. Makes no sense to me. As far as proceedings in the absence of a quorum, Robert's Rules of Order states on page 336 that the only action that can legally be taken in the absence of a quorum is to fix the time to which to adjourn, which is Rule 22, adjourn, Rule 21, or recess, 20, or take measures to obtain a quorum. And so no other actions are legitimate for the transaction for the council. And therefore, once a quorum is lost, if there are no actions pertaining to Rule 22, 21, or 20, then the meeting is adjourned at that point. I believe, I believe the council member is correct. And in talking with uh, Ann McFarland this last week, who just happened to be up in uh, one of our training sessions, I got Jurassic Parliamentarian a second time. Good, good. <laughs> um, I believe if we merely took the note on the last page regarding adjournment and put that prior to council comments, we would be correct. And, well, oh, go ahead. and, and did, um, matter of fact, she wanted to, to ask me about a case study she heard that we possibly had for her. Um, and that was one of the other things that she mentioned was, you know, the only thing you can do at that point is general discussion. You can't do anything else beyond that. It's, it's done and finished. So I think I, I would hesitate to strike the council comments from the minutes in there because they certainly took place. I believe you're correct, though, that they took place outside of the adjournment of the meeting. Well, we have often a lot of discussion with the council members and the members of the public after the, adjourn after the adjournment of the meeting, and we don't log any of those comments. And so even discussions between council members after the adjournment of the meeting are not recorded in the minutes. And that's, that's why my objections are raised. Although I do completely agree that the um, council comments that were um, listed there are duly noted and um, respectfully um, read, uh, I would still request that they uh, be removed from the actual minutes since it wasn't part of the actual meeting. Mr. Mayor, if I could just, uh, pardon me, um, this doesn't really, I think, have any bearing ultimately on that question that, that no. uh, Councilman Delavar is making, but just to point out that your rules at section 1.2, <clears throat> which would govern over Roberts in this case, that really have constrained the council to one course of action uh, in the event of a lack of a quorum, and it says if a quorum is not present, those in attendance will be named and they shall adjourn to a later time, but no adjournment shall be for a longer period than until the next regular meeting. Uh, again, that's what happened. It was consistent with your rules. Um, that should have been formalized, I think, immediately upon the lack of a quorum. Rather, what we did is undertook informal conversation, and then you, then you undertook that formality pursuant to your rules. Would the gentleman yield for a question? Uh -huh. um, has this council adopted these rules? These, the council rules that I'm referring to, correct, were adopted by the council earlier this year. And that's a, that's a rule that we didn't change. That, that had been in the existing document. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay, we've got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Further council discussion? Please repeat the motion. Motion is to strike any of the uh, council comments at the end of the, basically anything from lack of a quorum at this point, no further action can be taken. And the note on adjournment would go right after that portion of the rest of the uh, record would be stricken. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 Roll call. Councilmember Coaston? No. Councilmember Shoemaker? Aye. Councilmember McDaniel? Aye. Councilmember Delavar? Aye. Councilmember Greenlee? Nay. Councilmember Morris? Nay. And Councilmember Russell? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Any other changes to the council minutes of April 4? Okay. Uh, agenda Bill 15111, a contract with Western Display Fireworks. Oh, I'm sorry. So do we have a motion for passage of the minutes themselves? So moved. As amended. As amended, yes. Second. <coughs> Got a motion and a second. Any further council discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now agenda bill 5111, contract with Western Display Fireworks. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, this is the contract for the fireworks show for 4th of July that the Hotel and Lodging Tax Advisory Committee approved the expenditure for. And I know there was a couple questions at the workshop and we did get an answer to those, um, which was included in the agenda bill. And uh, one of the questions was regarding the multi-year language in the contract. And apparently in 2009, uh, the city did sign a multi-year agreement with Western Fireworks, which is included in the agenda packet as well. Um, and then the language is standard language regarding uh, increased cost. And there's an explanation uh, in the agenda bill talking about um, it's meant to cover the major changes in any permit fees that, that might occur. It's not necessarily if the cost of fireworks increase and it's standard language. And they did include that um, they've never had to do that with our fireworks show. So the recommended action tonight is to authorize the mayor to sign the attached contract and purchase order agreement for the fireworks display. So moved. Second. <coughs> Got a motion and a second to authorize the mayor to sign the contract and purchase order agreement with Western Display Fireworks. Council discussion. Mr. Mayor. Uh, so if I understand correctly from the attachment for the multi-year agreement, today, uh, this year is the end of that multi-year agreement and it doesn't automatically renew beyond that or does it? Do we know? I believe it reads in there 2009, 10, and 11. Okay. Yeah, the years 2009 through 2011. Okay. Well, thanks for that clarification. <clears throat> so, um... Since this is the final year of the contract, um, does that mean we'll more than likely be going out to bid on this for next year? Haven't even contemplated that at this point. Other council questions? Okay, I've got a motion and a second to authorize the mayor to sign the contract and purchase order agreement with Western Display Fireworks. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Uh, new business, Agenda Bill 5211, Water, Sewer, and Stormwater Revenue Bond Ordinance. Mrs. Forsberg. Yes, we are ready for action on the ordinance for the revenue bond sale. And um, I'm going to actually cross my fingers and hope this works to switch to my computer for a presentation from Mr. Jim Nelson with Martin Nelson and Company. So if you'll bear with me for just a moment. Good evening, Jim. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. Council members, honored to be here again. For the record, I'm Jim Nelson with Martin Nelson Company, bond underwriter to the city of Washougal. 
As you recall, I was before you on April 11th at your workshop meeting. So indeed, the market did remain stable. Um, in, before you is a presentation here with your logo on the front on page two. And I'm just going to reiterate a few points we talked about on the 11th, just because you've done such a great job. Uh, so again, congratulations on achieving the underlying rating grade of A+. Uh, it's a great accomplishment for the city, and uh, special thanks to the staff. The bonds also qualified for a bond insurance contract with a sure guarantee. Uh, the bond market did remain stable, and the interest rates that we're committing to this evening is a net borrowing cost with fees of 4.85% for the 20-year financing. And basically, that financing is structured around your outstanding debt, so it's what we call a wrap structure, a deferred principle. Um, the change that did occur since our last meeting is that the size went up 280000 And don't worry, that's not uh, attributed to fees. It's what we call an original issue discount, and this is similar to paying points up front on your mortgage to lower your interest rate. On page three, I created a slide, and it's always a tough one to explain <coughs> to council on the whole idea of an original issue discount and original issue premium. But basically, you have prospective buyers of bonds out there. Some of them have sort of a bearish sentiment. Others have a bullish sentiment. Uh, currently, we're seeing that the coupons are right around 4% or 5% depending on the yield. So if the interest rate charged to the city is slightly lower than the yield to the investor, then that's known as an original issue discount. That's like paying points up front on your mortgage to buy the interest rate down. Another option is to go, um, if you have the buyers, what we call an original issue premium, where the interest rate is set slightly higher than the yield to the investor, and then that lowers the principal amount. But you can see the bottom of the page on the two, two boxes, if we start with the left box, overall this original issue discount um, lowers your net borrowing costs net-net by approximately 100000 So the original issue discount is 242000 the net borrowing cost is 4.85%. The total interest over the 20-year life is 10756000 When we add that to the higher principal amount at $16,120,000, then you, you have a total <coughs> principal interest of $26,876,032. If you just go right over to the right, you'll see um, the right-hand box that that estimated total principal and interest is 26 million. 973,000, and that's a structure with what we would call PAR bonds. Um, again, a principal amount of 15,840,000 that we talked about last week. However, the total interest cost is higher and the borrowing rate is higher. So it really is a cost effective structure. If there's any questions I can answer on this? Yes. yes. So it's costing us $280,000, uh, and what are the savings on that? But that's with the 280 already deducted. Okay, so we, we're making 100000 over the 280 we've invested. Correct, yeah. Smooth move, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I'll keep rolling. Um, <clears throat> on page four, you can see on the right hand side in the box there, the bonds. Uh, this is your new payment schedule. And again, this is a $16,120,000 bond. The net borrowing cost is 4.85%. And you can see under the column annual debt service what those payments look like. And the reason why you have smaller principal payments, especially the first 10 years, is to structure that or wrap it around your outstanding debt. And by doing that, then you achieve a higher debt service coverage. It works well with your rate study and that helped to achieve um, your high underlying rating grade of A+. Page five is a repeat uh, of last week's slide, but it, it bears repeating. Again, special thanks uh, to David Scott, Jennifer Forsberg, um, I go to my list here, Trevor Evers, RJ Stevenson, and Mitch Knight. They did an excellent job and presentation to Standard & Poor's on the conference call, it went about 60 minutes. They answered questions on management, finance, <coughs> local economy, and long-term planning for the utility system. And 
And so that was instrumental in getting the lower interest cost as well as qualifying for a bond insurance contract. So you can see your rating is at A+. Plus. It's a fantastic accomplishment considering the economy we're in. And I think in the future you certainly have the potential to upgrade that rating to something higher. The last page shows the current interest rate market. And again, interest rates uh, still remain stable. The outlook here is in the near future. Um, the market, and you hear more and more uh, so-called uh, experts, Wall Street, talking that uh, higher rates uh, in the future, that rates have to go up. So we'll see if they're correct or not. But I think your timing is very good. Also before you is a contract to purchase. And after the bond attorney, if you read, talks about the bond ordinance, then um, we'll need to have, assuming approval of the ordinance, then we'll need to have the mayor sign um, three original copies of the contract to purchase. Any questions? Doesn't okay. sound like. Thanks very much. Thank you, Jim. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, members of the council. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a frog in the throat. Uh, my name is Cynthia Weed. I'm a partner at KL Gates uh, for my like Preston Gates and Ellis. Our firm has acted as your bond council for many years. I know I've been here a number of times before, uh, and some of you may remember it in connection with what, most recently the LID financing that you had that took some, some time to finally finish. Uh, the action item that you have before you tonight is ordinance number 1696. <clears throat> it's a fairly lengthy ordinance, and that's because it's a revenue bond ordinance. These bonds that you're issuing tonight are payable strictly from the revenues of your operating utilities. That is, no tax revenues are pledged to pay the debt service on these bonds. As a result, the buyers of the bonds are interested in operating covenants that you include in your ordinance for the benefit of the owners of these bonds. And those operating covenants uh, include two primary operating covenants. And the first is that you will set rates and charges sufficient <coughs> to pay not only your operating expenses, but also the debt service on these bonds, and then also maintain a coverage factor of at least 125%. That is, there's an extra 25% coverage factor. And that's a, a covenant that's required to be observed every year while these bonds are outstanding. And that's to help to protect the bondholders in cases of ups and downs in annual revenues just simply because of consumption of water, et cetera, et cetera, or population changes or extra costs. The second covenant that is of primary benefit for the bondholders is the fact that you are obligated to maintain a reserve fund. And that reserve fund, in general, is an amount approximately equal to your maximum annual debt service on your outstanding bonds. And so it is never expected that you will actually draw on that reserve fund, but it's there as a cushion in case of an extended uh, downturn in the economy that would cause your revenues to decrease over a period of time. And again, that's because these bonds are not payable from tax revenue. So there is an intent to try to make sure that to maintain, and you get that A plus rating because there is a high degree of certainty that because of these operating covenants in your reserves that you will always be able to meet your debt service payments as they come due. So that's quite frankly what takes up most of the volume of this uh, ordinance. But there are some additional tax covenants that are imposed by the Internal Revenue Service, generally pretty straightforward and easy to accomplish. That is that these are going to continue to, these facilities will continue to be used for governmental purposes. Um, <clears throat> there are now, most recently, probably since the last time that you uh, passed a, 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 a bond ordinance of this magnitude, Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC requirements for ongoing disclosure. That is, um, uh, Ms. Forsberg is going to be required to make annual filings uh, with a system called EMA that is maintained by the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board sort of, and is required by the SEC. So that bondholders who buy your bonds will get annual financial information about the city on an annual basis. So they, they will be able to actually see your operating results on a year-to-year -year basis and be able to look at them and compare what the prior uh, year's activities have been for the city as a whole. <clears throat> 
all of the final interest rates, the redemption provisions, oh, and last but not least, the bond insurer today gave us about four or five uh, pages of in, in <coughs> operating materials, really mostly um, administrative, that is, these annual financial statements will also have to be shared with the bond insurer, et cetera. And of course, bond insurance is bought not like regular insurance is bought, you buy fire insurance, you buy auto insurance, because you actually expect that maybe a fire could happen or an accident could happen. Bond insurance is really only provided to you with the view that it will never be called upon. That is, um, bond insurers don't actually expect to pay out on the bond insurance. So the fact that you bought the bond insurance is a recognition of the fact that you'll never need the bond insurance. And it's only there to help you get an increase in the rating and therefore, therefore a lower interest cost. And so it's, it's strictly a financial matter. It's not really because you're covering any real risk to bondholders. It's there only <coughs> to lower the actual, uh, lower the cost, the interest cost, and increase because of the increased rating associated with the bond insurance. These bonds are absolutely fabulous investments, as, as has been described by Martin Nelson. And uh, you should recommend uh, that any citizen here in the city of Washougal buy these bonds for your own personal portfolio. Um, however, they would not be a good investment for you personally uh, because you're going to be voting on this bond ordinance tonight and actually approving the interest rates. And so you should recommend them to all of your friends and neighbors and everyone here in the audience, but not necessarily yourself as an investment for your own personal portfolio. With that disclaimer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know I love talking about bonds probably much more than most people like hearing me talk about bonds, but I'd be delighted to answer any questions at all about the bond ordinance or any covenants or anything else about the general topic. Yes. Yes, thank you. So uh, last week we got sort of the template for tonight's ordinance. And I was curious as to, I mean, it, it appears that, that the ordinance that we actually get received tonight is a lot thicker. I was curious if you could explain to us what's been added in. You bet. Um, the principally, the if you look on page 17, you'll see that all of the interest rates have been filled in. So, and that went to market last Friday. So we were actually able to fill in the interest rates. We determined certain call provisions for the bonds that are finally set forth, and that's on. I'm gonna say page. And that's on pages, basically page 23. And then if you go to the very end of the ordinance, I made reference to the bond insurer. They added from 54 to 61, which is their uh, commitment for bond insurance. And that's your acceptance of the insurance commitment. And then they have a certain number of provisions that they include uh, in their insurance commitment that we require, that are required to be included in this ordinance. As I said, we've reviewed them and they are, they are typical for bond insurance, uh, bond insurance uh, provisions. They mostly deal with, and this is their backstop, what happens if you don't pay and they have to pay? They want to be able to step in and become a third party beneficiary so that they can deal directly with the city. Again, they're primarily administrative provisions <coughs> that really uh, reflect what if this horrible circumstance happens. You know, all these articles we've been reading about in the Wall Street Journal about all these calamity situations that might happen, that all these communities are going bankrupt and nobody's paying their obligations, et cetera, et cetera, and all of a sudden the bond insurer is required to step in. So that's why they have seven pages that deal with this what if the city defaults on its outstanding bonds and the insurer has to happen, has to come in. And so that's really the bulk of what was added between the two, between the two versions that you see. Other questions for Cynthia, Paul? I just wanted to <coughs> actually point out something that I read in the contract that says, the bonds shall not be general obligations of the city. Yes. And just, I want to underline that, that these are bonds that have rights, if you will, only to the utility rates in the city. They do not have any legal right to the general fund tax revenues of the city. 
Right. And that's what I started, and I probably should have finished with that again, to make sure that there is an understanding that it is the rates and charges of the utilities that are pledged to the repayment of these bonds. There, is no, there are no taxes that are available to or pledged to the payment of the debt service on these outstanding bonds. It's strictly a utility obligation. And that's consistent with the accounting rules that are applied here in the, in the state of Washington, actually. That is that one fund can't necessarily benefit another fund, that the utility funds have to stand on their own. Uh, there is a cross pledge, that is the water and the so all the water sewer revenues are actually pledged to pay the debt service on these bonds, so that all of your utility revenues are pledged. Although uh, when you're dealing with your rate studies, I think you set your rates accordingly, water rates, sewer rates. But there is a tradition in this state of permitting, in order to achieve a better credit rating, quite frankly, to permit the cross pledge of water sewer revenues to the payment of all of your outstanding water sewer revenue bonds be they for water purposes or sewer purposes. Other questions? Okay. Council action. Mr. Mayor, I ask unanimous consent that we read the ordinance by title only. <laughs> Hearing no objection, so ordered. An ordinance of the City of Washougal, Washington, providing for the issuance of water and sewer revenue bonds of the city an aggregate principal amount of $16,120,000 to provide funds necessary to make certain capital improvements to the water and sewerage system of the city, fixing the date, form, terms, maturities and covenants of said bonds, approving a purchase contract for the bonds, and reserving the right of the city to issue future water and sewer revenue bonds on a parity with said bonds, herein upon compl compliance with certain conditions and providing for the sale of the bonds herein authorized. Mr. Mayor, I move that we pass, post, and publish the ordinance in the usual manner. Second. We've got a motion and a second to pass, post, and publish the ordinance in the usual manner. Council discussion, Michael? Mr. Mayor, I actually rise in um, opposition to this agenda bill. And even though there are elements of this bill that have bugged me for a while, it's only been recent that my thoughts about this have uh, sort of coalesced. There are certain um, revenues that we'll be raising for this which are already obligated to the East Street <coughs> improvements, and I understand our obligation to pay for that. Um, but my main, uh, my main objection uh, to voting for this uh, bond is twofold. Uh, one is that I do think that our nation is in serious economic um, throes, and I don't think that getting ourselves indebted for $16.1 million right now um, may be the best thing we could do. In hindsight, we're going to see in five or ten years whether or not um, my concerns were valid or not. Uh, tonight it's difficult to predict that exactly, and I know we have a varying degree of, um, of opinions about that on the Council and I respect that. Um, but m the problem that I have is that there are times when um, the circumstances seem to shout to us, buy now, pay later. And this is similar to that. And I know that we have some bonds that are retiring soon. My proposal in lieu of having this large of a bond would be to uh, allow those bonds to retire and start banking that money in a reserve fund for the water and sewer um, enterprises, and then uh, to work almost from a cash basis, if you will, instead of from a borrowing basis. I know that is not a popular um, method by any means, but given the fact that we don't know exactly what's going to happen with the economy, uh, that is my instinct, and that's, uh, that would be my desire, and so I'll be voting no, and I yield the floor. Thank you. Do you? Uh, I share Councilman Delavar's concerns, but a question for the staff, if I may. My understanding was that we are faced with federal and state mandates requiring uh, action almost uh, immediately, at least in the near future, and that these funds are going to be used to discharge that obligation. That's true, Council Member, for some of the funds. Uh, this, the proceeds from this bond sale will fund uh, the totality of our utility capital improvement plan uh, that the council has approved. Some of the items, some key items uh, in that capital improvement plan are uh, required because of federal mandates. Uh, 
Uh, you remember the water pressure issue on the east side up on the hill, uh, some required redundancies at our sewage treatment plant. Uh, but there are other uh, reasons for the capital uh, facilities that we're investing in. Uh, so the entirety of the funds are not for that compliance, but certainly a, a good portion of them. So the, are the rest of them devoted to uh, projects which provide infrastructure for development? Yes, I think everything on the capital improvement plan is, is either upgrading areas that need to be upgraded or uh, building capacity so that our comprehensive plan, which is projecting out further development, gives us the opportunity to be ready to go to, to, to provide service where we need to provide service. That's about as detailed as I could be if, if we needed some more details on it um, and reminders about what, what's in our capital plan. Jim is here and could speak to that. Mr. Mayor. Oh, yeah, I, I'm going to be a supporter of this, and uh, primarily it's because of the fact that uh, the bidding climate is much better right now. And without question, uh, I think all the prognosticators are saying that the interest rates are going to go up. So that, that being uh, trying to, to take care of the financial side of this world uh, for the city, I think it's prudent that we uh, pass it tonight and, and move forward with the, those two facts. Mr. Mayor, uh, just just to clarify uh, the what this uh, money is going for, by the way, it's in the actual ordinance itself on page 15. Um, it, what it's planned for is E Street water line replacement, W uh, Street and 49th Street improvements, Zone 4 reservoir, Zone 3 alternate site and reservoir design and construction, and uh, various collection system improvements, including lift station retrofits, phase 2 improvements, and so on and so forth. It does list. What, which ones are included with this right and, there. And that list is, is basically, I think, divided into two groups. One is to satisfy the, the mandates, and the other is to provide the infrastructure for development. Mm -hmm. John? Yeah, I actually support this um, for the reason of when we first started discussing this, this uh, was a bond measure that we were going to pursue in lieu of going after federal stimulus money which would have been really, a, a, in my book, a big no-no. Um, but we decided to go this route because it gives us the control locally. And, um, you know, while I, I share um, Councilman Delavar's, uh, you know, prepare for the worst and hope for the best, um, I still, I think if things do get that bad, I think this bond will probably not be the, will, the worst of things to come. So I, I'm supporting this bond because um, this is what we set out to do um, prior, instead of doing the uh, federal uh, stimulus grants. Molly? Um, yes, I would um, agree. And I would to also support uh, this proposal um, because, number one, we have already approved a capital facilities plan for the items that are listed here. They're not only for development, you know, like future development, but they're for current shortfall, you know, like part of the uh, east side uh, water pressure issues that we have really don't address future growth, but they address shortfalls in current, you know, a current shortfall that we have in water pressure right now with some of our east side citizens. And so I think because we have already addressed the issue, we've already approved the capital facilities plan, I think it's imperative that we pass this bond measure tonight. Dave? Uh, two points. I, I agree with uh, Council Member Coaston here uh, about the uh, repairing the things that aren't working very well. I, I lump that into the development. Mm -hmm. To me, it's all development. Uh, the other thing is that Councilman, uh, Russell brought up the point uh, that we decided not to go with stimulus money in the bond instead. One of the reasons we did that was because the requirements on reporting are so uh, difficult to take care of by our staff, we'd have to hire a couple of more people. And so this, this is a, uh, a better way to go than federal stimulus monies. They look attractive until you start looking below the surface. Thank you. Paul? I think by and large our, our job up here is to try to be stewards for the future of our city and to be very smart about that. 
We never know what the trajectory of the future will hold, but that shouldn't keep us from making the best possible decisions we can make. We do have inadequate water pressure in the east side of town. In fact, um, we're sufficiently concerned that we're not fast-tracking development out there. And the sewer redundancy is, is one of those critical issues that if, if something should happen to the existing system, we don't have any redundancy at all. We have one system. And I can't imagine that we can get people to uh, stop using their facilities to stop our sewer demand. <laughs> Now is the time to buy. Prices are low. The interest rates are low and expected to be higher. The cost of construction is low and expected to be higher. And all of the materials that go into construction, whether it's concrete or steel, those prices are lower now than they were several years ago. So now is the time to take advantage of the pricing structure. We need to improve the system. The problem with waiting until we have saved enough cash to do that is that everybody who is here pays for it and the people who will use it in the future do not because we have to accumulate all of the cash to pay for it from the existing rate payers. On the other hand, with this bond, then at least some of the costs are borne by the new people who will use the new system. Thank you. Other council comments, Dave? All of that having been said, this has uh, a familiar ring to it from merchants who, uh, and credit card companies who say, buy now and save all this money. <laughs> Things are on sale. Uh, on the other hand, we do need to do this. This is a good time, and uh, I'll be voting for it, even though I, my, there's my Scottish nature in me that's beating on the inside of my head saying, don't be an idiot, uh, be careful, be prudent. Uh, but I'm gonna vote for this one, and I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope for the best. But uh, that having been said, later tonight, I'll talk about how we can deal with this when we talk about the uh, supplementary budget. Thank you. Jennifer? Yes, um, I'll also be voting in favor of this ordinance, or this agenda bill, pardon me. Um, it's my understanding that our systems are aging, and um, many of uh, the, the facilities and uh, the services we provide are closer at capacity, and if we plan on growing or uh, enticing any companies uh, to relocate here, we will want to show that we have a plan in place for not just the short term, but for the long term as well. And so I will be voting uh, with my fellow council members. Thank you. Any other council discussion? Dave, final comment? All this having been said, I'd like to thank Councilman Delvar for bringing forward uh, the concerns that I think some of us felt uh, had difficult, difficulty articulating and uh, really struggled with. Thank you. Okay, I've got a motion and a second to pass, post, and publish the ordinance in the usual manner. If there's no other council discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, if I may, we need to um, authorize the mayor to sign the revenue bond letter uh, excuse me, revenue bond authorization letter from Martin Nelson and Company dated 4 18 11. So well. move. Second. We've got a motion and a second to authorize the mayor to sign the, what did we call it? Revenue bond authorization letter from Martin Nelson and Company dated 4 18 11. Everybody's got that? Council discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries. 
Okay, it takes us to item number two, charge of and appointments to the ethics committee. Uh, Dave, did you want to take that partially or? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Before we invest a lot of time in this, uh, may I offer a motion of uh, reconsideration, a motion to reconsider? Uh, there were people here uh, who were not here when that was taken. I'm one of those. I'd like to reconsider uh, the action that the council took uh, based, on, based on the precipitousness of the action uh, inter in, to establish a, uh, an ethics committee. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, could council members speak into the microphone because they're having a hard time hearing in the back. That would really be great. Thank you. Will do. Yeah, um, Councilman Shoemaker, I, I believe if one of the one of, one of the issues that I tried to confirm this last week as well is is the procedure, if there is one for council members who were absent to um, move for reconsideration. I believe, Dave, if I'm if I remember Ann's answer correctly, if you weren't at the meeting, you weren't at the meeting, basically. Right. Um, the only motion that would be in order for reconsideration would be someone who was in the majority on that action. That's pursuant to Roberts, but really it's pursuant to your own rules. And that is at 5.4 in your rules. A motion to reconsider must be made by a person who voted with the majority on the principal question and must be made at the same or succeeding regular meeting. Um, and it goes on to say that if you've done a quasi-judicial, like say a zone change or something like that, that you can't do that. Uh, so, uh, and then according to, to her as well, uh, we asked her very pointedly on that matter, but because your rule speaks specifically to it, that's, that is the item that would govern. Mm -hmm. No, well, this has been the rules. Rules can be suspended. Um, your rules say where was that? Is that at the end? Yep. Yes, at the very end end of the rules, um, any provisions of these rules not governed by the city code, which this would not be, may be temporarily suspended by a vote of a majority of the council. So uh, a temporary suspension of these rules is always in order unless there's something in the code that would say otherwise. And in this case, on that item, there would not be. Mr. Mayor. Uh, as I noted in my email that I sent out to the council, I believe that um, perhaps a point of clarification here might be appropriate. The, the intent, I believe, uh, of council member Shoemaker would be to rescind something previously adopted, which would be in order. Uh, that's, a, that's a different type of motion, certainly. Right. right. Section 35, I think, that you had mentioned. Right. Um, right. But the, right. the point is that it is correct that if the motion to reconsider would only be from the, the um, winning side, if you will, of, of any debate that could reconsider it only in that. And it's interesting that in our policy, we allow that to continue into the next meeting. But usually it's only, uh, I think Robert's rules of standard is only during the actual meeting itself. Unless your rules dictate other. Right, right. Basically it's like, oops, whoops, uh, we now we have new information that's come to us. Let's go ahead and undo what we just did. Uh, that would be the motion to um, uh, reconsider. So I believe uh, the motion that you'd be interested in would be to um, rescind something previously adopted, uh, which, you know, just to clarify. And I certainly... Um, I, I would, I don't have a say in the matter. I wouldn't have any objection if, even if one of the three council members that were in the majority at the last meeting uh, made a motion to reconsider that. Again, the fact that there were two council members uh, absent during the meeting of the fourth is not the reason that it was brought forward then. Um, and I, I will back the words up that I made that evening. I fully wished that all council members were here so that everybody could weigh in on that. Um, the Irish and me moves forward through a course of action and, and that's where, uh, where we got to on the 4th itself. So I don't have any, any preference either direction. Again, my only, uh, my only consideration is that the council somehow deal with the issue either, either to establish one or to say we're not going to establish one. So. May I change my motion? Sure. Yeah, I <clears throat> was just going to point out, I just read this, the uh, Councilman Delavar passed out to all of us. 
prior to the meeting. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to read this. Um, it looks like he addresses maybe what you're trying to get at. So would it, I mean, would you be able to hold off on that motion if this doesn't suffice then? Well, so far we don't have a second for the motion. Right, okay. Move to rescind the establishment of the Ethics Committee until uh, we can, such time as we can uh, deal with all the issues. I am not hearing a second. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I, I did, uh, just for the uh, interest of the, um, informing the public of uh, what we're referring to up here, I passed out uh, some sheets of paper uh, with uh, four, I'm sorry, three different uh, motions which I'll be making tonight in relationship to the uh, ethics uh, committee. I think that um, it is a timely issue. It's also one that I do believe um, is necessary for us because our ethics policy mixes, um, as the mayor and I were speaking this afternoon about this, it mixes both elected officials and employees of the city in sort of the same policy, which seems kind of inappropriate considering that we're hired by the people, whereas the employees of the city are hired directly by the department heads or the mayor. So it would make sense that the recourse you would have for um, ethics issues or whatnot would be different for both classes. And I think that's something that's timely. Just let I me mean, change the garbage code. We've changed a lot of different codes to simplify it, to bring it up to speed. It makes sense that we can review this and, and to uh, change it. And that's one of the reasons why uh, I wanted to clarify a couple of points on the committee itself. And uh, the, the three motions, uh, hopefully we can get through if, the, if it's the council's pleasure to go along with me on this one. Um, and so in, in line with that, uh, first, Mr. Mayor, I move to change the name of the, eth of the committee to the Ethics Policy Review Committee. From what? From Ethics Committee, which is what it is currently. Second. Just I'm sorry, second. Got a motion and a second to change the name of the committee to the Ethics Policy Review Committee. Council discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I thought this was a necessary uh, change in order to clarify to the public as well as to ourselves that what this committee is is simply a committee to review the ethics policy, make a, recommend, make a recommendation to the council for the council to act on that recommendation or not. But this is not uh, a you know, headhunting uh, committee. This is not a tribunal. This is simply just an ethics policy review of the committee. And they were all clear on, on that purpose. And just a point of clarification for the public as well. I know, Mr. Bullen, you had, uh, in your comments to the council, the, the city currently has a portion of the employee handbook that speaks to um, ethics and our conduct of ourselves and that type of stuff. In the overall handbook, it also talks about that those policies uh, pertain to appointed and elected officials as well. So to a large degree, if not completely, the city has an ethics policy now. And what the, uh, the request was at the April 4th meeting is uh, simply to establish an appointed committee to review that policy itself. So I've got a motion and a second. Other council discussion in, in regards to the motion to change the name of the committee? Well, uh, yes, I would actually support Councilman Delavar's uh, comments and his motion. I believe that was the intent. Uh, there may have been some misinterpretation um, at the last meeting, but I do believe that was the intent of the meeting or t intent of the uh, um, committee formation and the, and the movement to do so. And I do believe that um, it, it does clarify while we do have an ethics policy in place in our personnel handbook, I think this uh, will actually give us an opportunity to have discussion about the distinction between hired staff and elected officials. And if for no other reason than to um, illuminate to the public that we do hold ourselves to a higher standard. And we may never, uh, there may never be any consequences or additions to a policy uh, from what we re review from this committee. 
And um, however, I feel like the debate and the discussion is worthy of moving forward. Paul? I also want to underline what may have been a misunderstanding is this is the committee that was proposed is a policy committee, not a tribunal. The council has no authority, in fact, is prohibited by Washington law from sanctioning its members by anything other than removing committee assignments or something like that. The council has no authority is particularly excluded from removing another member of council. So it was never a question of a tribunal. It was always a question of what should our ethics policy be. Other council comments on the uh, amendment? Okay, hearing none, I've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And Mr. Mayor, I move to uh, set the makeup of the committee to three voting members of the council to be chosen by the council as a whole in regular session. Would you entertain an amendment? Second. I've got a motion and a second. Council discussion. Councilman Shoemaker. Would you entertain an amendment? The full council? That, that is... That is what this motion is, yes. Uh, the, the reason, by the way, if I may, I, I think I may know where you're going with this. So let me go ahead and explain the reason why I'm recommending that we specifically say that the entire council in regular session will appoint the members to the Ethics Committee. The reason for that is our uh, Washougal Municipal Code is potentially ambiguous on this point in that uh, we have an appointments committee which is charged with all other appointments, unless there is a bylaw or a, a charter of a committee or appointment which would require the um, council member who's on that committee or board or, or whatever to be appointed some other way. So in other words, if we don't specify in the makeup of this committee that it's the makeup is determined as, by the council as a whole, then in theory, we should then have the appointment committee reve uh, convene, select some members, recommend that to the whole council, and then have the whole council vote on it. We're all here, including the members of the appointment committee, and so we're able to do that business without reconvening the appointment committee. If we specify the council as a whole, recommend or appoint uh, council members tonight, then we don't need to go through that motion, and we also don't violate Wagashu Municipal Code. That was the reason why I wanted to have this specifically in there. Does that answer your concerns? Yes, Thank you. And, and my concern is that um, the, full, the full council, seven members, have a chance to vote on this. Right. right. And, and you would even under your current uh, appointments committee as well, their recommendations come back to, to full council for ratification. Yes, but they can uh, bring that back to a quorum. I'm looking for a seven-member council vote. Gotcha. I understand now. Answer? Paul? No, sorry. I'm concerned, frankly, that three members of council is not an adequate uh, knowledge base to pursue this question. I'd like to add several people from outside of council, probably from outside the city, this city. I would suspect that, uh, among others, Council and staff in Battleground and Council and staff in Vancouver probably know more about council ethics than they really want to, and that they might have uh, some pretty good recommendations on how we might move forward. And because I know that, that both, both of them have new, relatively new policies, and both of those policies have ended up being problematic. So I would hope that by incorporating some outside experts, if you will, and not limiting ourselves to choosing from among this seven, that we could uh, gain a lot more knowledge and experience uh, in moving forward. Point of clarification, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. 
Um, will you be lending Jeanette and her experience to assist the three council members? Our HR person, for those people who don't know who Jeanette is. Yeah, I would, I would certainly hope so. Um, typically okay. for uh, committees such as this, we've got a, a senior staff member assigned, and since that, a lot of this deals with the employees, that type of stuff as well, and even ele newly electeds and appointed, that type of stuff, she still runs down the same new hire procedures as she does with employees. So. All right, thank you. So I would move an amendment to the amendment that would set the makeup of the committee of three voting members of council to be chosen by the council as a whole in regular session and three, three outside experts and by outside I mean outside of the city of Washougal elected or staff who would also serve on the committee and I would also as part of that like to underline that this committee makes recommendations to council. So the motion would be that the makeup of the committee be three voting members of council and three outside members from outside the city and that this committee ethics policy review committee will make recommendations to the council. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I've got a motion and a second, um, basically to add three additional outside individuals from outside the city to serve on the committee as well. Council discussion, Dave. I don't want to devote the the voting power of the council with outside experts or anybody else. This is a Washougal problem. It should be handled by the people of Washougal. If we want to consult with these people, we can do so. I don't want them to be voting members of a, of a committee to recommend policy to this council. Molly? Um, actually, I would disagree with um, the um, proposal by Councilman Greenlee. Um, I don't see it as a problem. I mean, I don't think it's a problem of the city of Washougal, but I do believe that we can still enlist the uh, discussion and actions from experts in other areas, but I don't see that they would necessarily have to be uh, voting members of the council. So I would not support this amendment. Other comments? Brad? Yeah, the reason that I think it's important that we have some outside, uh, I won't say influence, but some help on this is that uh, Sometimes someone that's far away from the, the issues have a different perspective on this. And, and for that reason, I want to support this and, and have that other set of six eyes to looking at this and, and, and seeing that, just advising us that we're doing it the right way. I, I do have a comment. Um, yeah, in my opinion, um, it's really about finding out what citizens want and expect from us as council members and uh, elected and appointed officials. Uh, an ethics committee to review these policies is, uh, that would be made up of only council members and other elected or appointed members seems like a conflict of interest to me. Um, in my opinion, to have an effective ethics advisory board, the most important characteristic should be independence with no undue political influence. And um, so I don't really see uh, how council members or uh, other appointed or elected officials can sit on any sort of an advisory board like this. Um, I'm thinking entirely made up of Washougal citizens. That is. Uh, my recommendation, and I have I have a motion, but we already have a, two amendments, so I'll be voting against the amendment. Okay. Other council discussion on the amendment. The amendment. Okay, I've got a motion and a second. Uh, this is the amendment. The amendment to add three outside experts from outside the city of Washington to serve on the committee as well. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Roll call. 
Council Member Russell? No. Council Member Morris? Aye. Council Member Greenlee? Aye. Council Member Delavar? No. Council Member McDaniel? No. Council Member Shoemaker? No. And Council Member Coaston? No. Motion fails. And we still have a motion and a second on the amendment, which is to move the makeup. Uh, move to set the makeup of the committee to three voting members of the council to be chosen by the council as a whole in regular session. Any other council discussion on that one? Okay, all those members? Oh, Mr. Mayor. Yes. I think uh, <clears throat> before we move further, uh, rather than uh, settling this issue alone, um, Council Member McDaniel has brought forward an issue which I think is germane to the question, and that is, the original motion states that the three members of the um, committee will be members of the council. And the main question is, should the, I mean, I think it's germane to that discussion to uh, discuss whether or not we think that the council should be responsible for the recommendations, or a committee of the council should be responsible for recommendations to the council as a whole. Um, I can certainly understand the intent uh, behind uh, my colleagues' uh, comments with regards to the independence. And I certainly understand that we definitely want to have, you know, fine minds working on this as best as possible and not to make it a big production as well. The other thing to consider here is that um, it may not be, well, I don't know what other people's expectations are about uh, this ethics review. I'm on some level, I'm not expecting it to be a, an enormous project. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but we have some issues with our existing policy. It mixes elected and hired employees. It needs to be fixed. It needs to be consistent. And the reminder of what it actually says and what, it, what we're going to change it to might be a good reminder to us to what standards we need to hold ourselves to. So as such, and this is going to be done in the public's eye as well, I think that it's a simple enough matter where we don't necessarily need to create a big um, you know, commission and then uh, worry about uh, getting nominations from the general public and then worry about whether there are any agendas or allegiances or whatnot. That's why I support having the members of the council uh, bring it back to the council as a whole. And then also, either, way it, either which way it's constituted, whether it's from just constituents or whether it's just from council members, um, when there is a recommendation finally brought back to the council, the council can amend, ignore, adopt, whatever they wish from those recommendations. And only we are going to hold ourselves to that standard. So the final action is not, it may not change. And that's my reasoning for um, supporting the um, amendment as it is. One of my concerns is, and I've been on both sides of this fence, is that it's pretty obvious to the public that there's four to three voting here on almost any given topic. And I've been on the other side of that fence when, it was, when I was on one of the four. And so what I'm concerned about is that we, we resolve this so to a point that we get uh, three citizens in here or something that can look at this and so that that deck of cards aren't stacked. And that, that's what I'm after, is to make sure that there's an honest look at it uh, and, and, a, and a way to come back and present it to us that, that the ethics policies in the city as a whole are, are done and not one side or the other voting this thing into place. Well, that appears to be what happened at April, on the April the uh, 4th meeting. But um, I think it's the people of Washougal, the voters, who have stacked the deck four to three at this point. Uh, and before, as you point out, it was three to four. Uh, and you were part of that majority. Uh, now you're not. And uh, I, don't, I don't have any problem with the mandate of the voters. If they uh, stack the deck four to three in terms of uh, the types of things that are being voted on now, so be it. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to dilute uh, the effort here to form an ethics committee or a policy uh, just because the minority on the council doesn't want various aspects of it or wants certain aspects that uh, 
are not uh, exactly ethics oriented, but they're, they're oriented towards uh, evening out the power on the council. The people created the balance of power on the council. I'd like to maintain that. Mr. Mayor. Yes, John. I think it's important that we, um, at this point in the process, that we not get um, buried in the details. You know, we're supposed to get an ethics policy or an ethics review committee off the ground. And the, the recommendations that they bring back are going to come before this council. Regardless. Regardless. Um, regardless if it's, you know, a two, two to five vote, whether it's a four to three vote, whether it's, you know, one against six, that's hypothetical and looking into the future that we don't know. I mean, we just don't know what they're going to come back with. And I think it's important that we let the process play out and, uh, and see what they do find when they do get in there. Yeah. I think uh, some people might be surprised. You may get support that you hadn't anticipated because I share some of your concerns. Okay, I believe I've still got a motion on the floor to set the makeup of the committee to three voting members of the council to be chosen by the council as a whole in regular session. Any further council discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. No. no. I think I heard four to three, but let's go with a roll call just to be sure. Councilmember Coaston? Aye. Councilmember Shoemaker? Aye. Councilmember McDaniel? No. Councilmember Delavar? Aye. Councilmember Greenlee? Nay. Councilmember Russell? Aye. And Councilmember Morris? No. Sorry. Okay. Motion carried. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I move to charge the Ethics Policy Review Committee to report its recommendations on any changes necessary to the city's ethics policy to the council by June 27th, 2011. Second. Got a motion and a second to charge the Ethics Policy Review Committee to report its recommendations on any changes necessary to the city's ethics policy to the council by June 27, 2011. Council discussion. Mr. Mayor. I, I'm not wedded to this uh, date of June 27th, by the way, and I fully welcome any other recommendations if there's a better date. I picked that date. Um, if I remember correctly, that is the workshop before the first July meeting. Um, let me double check my calendar here. That's the last Monday of June which would be then the workshop prior to um, the first meeting in July. Um, and that was the reason why I picked this date. I think that probably will give the uh, committee enough time to consider and yet be timely enough in its recommendations to bring it back to the council. But I welcome any discussion if there's any other desires for any different length. John? Uh, I just want to make mention of the note that you put on here. It says, uh, since this is a special committee according to Robert's rules, once the committee has reported back in full uh, to the council, it shall cease to exist. So basically, it sunsets itself right after it comes back with its findings. Paul? I just wanted to ask staff if there's any issues of major import that you can think of that are going to come up at the end of June, <coughs> early July, budget amendments, uh, Anything like that? We're anticipating uh, bringing the supplemental budget before you in, in May. Uh, in June into July, I'm not aware of uh, anything significant. I'm sure there'll be some operational items that we'll be bringing forward. But this gives us plenty of notice to, to try to uh, make sure that the 27th meeting can be productive for this purpose and try to schedule around that. And I would, I would imagine that if something comes up that the council by its own action can, uh, can defer to a, another time if that would be appropriate and, we'd, and it, it might, the committee might even ask for more time depending upon what's going on or they might get done early. Wouldn't that be cool? Would be. <laughs> Any other council discussion? 
Okay, I've got a motion in a second to charge the Ethics uh, Policy Review Committee to report its recommendations on any necessary cha any changes necessary to the city's ethics policy to the council by June 27, 2011. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, yes. I move to nominate uh, Molly Koston uh, to the Ethics Policy Review Committee. Second. I've got a motion and a second to appoint Molly Koston to the committee. Any council discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I make a motion to, um, to nominate Councilman Delavar for the uh, Ethics Review Policy Committee. Second. Got a motion and a second to nominate Councilman Delavar to the committee. Council discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to uh, have Paul Grayley sit on that committee as well. With all due respect, I, I think I'll decline. And uh, I would like to nominate Jennifer McDaniel. I'll second. I've got a motion and a second. Bear with me just a second. Uh, to <coughs> nominate Jennifer McDaniel to the committee as well. Any council discussion? All in favor? Question. Oh, I'm sorry. Is Councilman McDaniel still serving as the mayor pro tem? Yes. I think there's a conflict of interest there. So. Clarification. Could be. I disagree. Yeah, conflict in which regard? Uh, she would be looking at uh, individual council issues, and as mayor pro tem, she looks at the city as a whole, much as you do. So I, I see that as a, if not a conflict of interest, uh, that's probably the best term to use, but a conflict of, of uh, visions that she needs to have to, to do the job properly. And I regret having to say that because I support her for everything. <laughs> Not a worry. Other council comments, discussion? If, it, if, it's, if it's a problem, then um, I'll be happy to withdraw my name. I think I'm the only one that thinks it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got a motion and a second to nominate Jennifer McDaniel to the committee. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. You have a committee. Thank you very much. Any other items in regards to an ethics policy review committee? Got to get used to that one. Mr. Mayor, okay. yes. uh, thank you. Uh, not with respect to this committee in particular, but I just wanted to make sure I had clarified something um, with respect to the role of the appointment committee. Um, as I was mentioning at the last meeting, uh, it may have been the intent of the council to establish the appointment committee to be a uh, catch-all, for lack of a better term, for all uh, committee assignments that would be council committees. Uh, however, what happened when we updated the ordinance was that we kept it intact with respect to your four standing committees, and then we created it uh, or it additionally empowered it to deal with outside appointments to outside committees and we're very specific in that and I believe potentially inadvertently did not, and I authored that ordinance so I take mm -hmm. responsibility for this, inadvertently did not uh, have language in there to suffice that it would deal with all ad hoc internal or external council committee appointments um, and so that's not a fatal flaw in terms of the council setting up committees because you can do what you just did. You could have, you could have uh, sent this to your appointments committee, but you would have done that by your own motion as opposed to your code, which you changed through that ordinance, doing it automatically. So that's a subtle clarification. And I guess I would ask if it's the pleasure of the council that um, we, we make a change 
to the code to pick that piece up or whether you defer to it being silent so that you can at your pleasure deal with situations as they arise. Mr. Mayor. John. Uh, as the author of that um, piece that uh, you guys fine tuned, um, would like to um, ask if it would be okay to have staff bring forward the correction to that language uh, for us to vote on as a council so that we don't run into kind of what we did the last time. That way we do have a proper process put in place. Yeah, I believe uh, Administrator Scott's uh, take on it today is correct. My belief was that you were, you were sending instructions that any council committees would come under the appointments committee. So I'm certainly in, in We'll do that. It'd be, that. it'd be pretty straightforward. I'll have it for you as soon as possible. Did you have something? I, I was just going to say, yeah, I, I, I would like to have that to look at and workshop. Hmm. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Thank okay. You. We are at that point in the agenda for additional public comments. Anyone that would like to speak to the council? Yes, Barbara. Well, two things happened in March. One, the gave me an opportunity for something else. As you may have noticed, we skated in at the very beginning of the meeting. If we'd have had one more second, we would have been late. And we either choose, uh, CVAN either chooses to have us come an hour ahead of time so that we can lounge in the comfortable chairs and bring a computer game and play the game of skunk or whatever I had in the computer at the time to pass the time away or to skate in at the, at the very beginning of the meeting. I hadn't even, I didn't have to rise for the pledge. I was already there, thank you. <laughs> However, that being said, gave me the opportunity to watch a small blurb on the ABC News tonight. I don't know when, if ever, we have to replace flags here in City Hall or outside of City Hall or in City Hall buildings, but we need to make sure that if and when we do so, we make sure that those flags are made by companies in the United States of America. And believe it or not, there are lots, if not tons, of flags made in China for our country. There is a company in Ohio, they showcase that particular company because a gentleman from Florida emailed ABC News and said, these guys do it in the United States. You might want to talk about them instead of talking about people that don't. So, and I'm sure there are others. And I, as I said, I don't know how many flag, flags we have to replace or for whatever reason, wear and tear or just the fact that they're old or we want new ones. But we just need to make sure that they are purchased from companies that are made here. And sometimes they're labeled and sometimes are not. We must do our due diligence. It's a good point. Thank you, Barbara. And, and just a uh, point of information, we just went through and replaced all of those flags as well, I might add. So, were they thank you. <laughs> I knew that. I would love to sit here and guarantee you they were, and I have not climbed up on one of those lanyards to see what was on them. So we will endeavor to find out. I have that piece, by the way, on tape if, if for some reason anyone would want to see it. Thank you. Just Other members? Okay. I just wanted to add the... Uh, I, I don't know about the state flag or the United States flag, but the only available source for the city of Washougal flag is Elmer's, which is a local company. Mm. Uh, Nettie De Roche, Addy Street, Washougal. Um, I sat last week and listened to some of the people in the audience talk about the meeting uh, two weeks ago where some of you were absent and where two of you chose to get up and leave the chambers. Uh, one of the people that spoke was not here, so I would like to speak from my own experience how I felt as a member of Washougal, a, a citizen of Washougal setting here. Um, first of all, I'm a little disturbed that the minutes were asked to be redone because that was very much part of the meeting. For those of us that were left sitting here, not knowing what was going on as uh, Councilman Delavar and Councilman Russell left the meeting. Maybe it was adjourned because there wasn't a quorum, but the citizens 
and the staff that were here were left hanging. In my opinion, unprofessional. I'm not sure what Robert's rules of order say, but I did hear Mr. Green Greenley have to leave one night and he excused himself. I also heard this evening Mr. Shoemaker talk about leaving things to the citizens because we will elect and do we have to wait to the next election to be able to see things get resolved in our community? Mr. Shoemaker also made a comment about Mr. Morris being on a four to three. It's not a four to three or a three to four, but I would like to compliment those council members that have sat here for the last year and watched Councilman Delavar opt to not vote and Councilman Morris, Councilman Greenlee, Councilman Costa did not get up and walk out. I have seen weeks and weeks of voting where it's four to three. Tonight I was pleasantly surprised, <coughs> thank you all so much, because that's what it is, is about. It's not about being on a four or a three. It's about voting on the right decision and think about how you vote because I've also seen you flip-flop several times. So vote your heart, not your comrade's position. And if you feel the need to leave, at least have the courtesy to let us know as citizens. It's disappointing. We'd like to see peace in the city council. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Other members? Yes, Dennis. No. Oh. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council. My name is Richard Helland. I live on, uh, if you've been in Washugo a long time, you've, it's the old Santa Claus Lane, 2818. I remember you Santa remember. Claus Lane. Uh, I, I submitted a letter to the city of Washugo, attempted to the Parks Department and its reference to the pickleball. And my recommendation would be to keep the tennis court the tennis court. And if need be, I would volunteer to pressure wash the dumb thing. But, uh, and the second recommendation would be to perhaps schedule a little bit of maintenance up there on, it's got algae, uh, black stuff. Uh, the one net is, does need some repair, but the other one is stretched. Uh, and uh, just the last night's weather, and we haven't had much of that. Uh, there was uh, two families up there playing tennis just, just in the last good weather. Uh, I, I don't have a, an agenda other than uh, I think it would be uh, a, a good decision to keep what we have and um, compliments to the city and, and the council and the audience. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Helland. I know uh, Suzanne had sent me a note that she was making sure to uh, get some maintenance scheduled regardless and hopefully not moving backwards, forwards, any of that type of stuff, but what it needs for the immediate, immediate future, so. Just, just a side note, I, I did an informal poll, and, and the one I had on the letter was one out of 20, and it's about two out of 100 right now. Uh, I'm not against exercise or physical activity, but uh, I think we should be good stewards and keep what we have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other folks from the audience that would like to address the council? Seeing none, moving to the mayor's report, I have a proclamation for you this evening. <clears throat> Bear with me on a dry throat. A proclamation for Buddy Poppies. Whereas the annual sale of Buddy Poppies by the veterans of foreign wars of the United States has been officially recognized and endorsed by the governmental leaders since 1922, and whereas the VFW Buddy Poppies are assembled by disabled veterans and the proceeds of this worthy fundraising campaign are used exclusively for the benefit of disabled and needy veterans and the widows and orphans of deceased veterans, and whereas the basic purpose of the annual sale of Buddy Poppies by the veterans of foreign wars is eloquently reflected in the desire to honor the dead by helping the living. Therefore, I, Sean Gard, Mayor of Washougal, Washington, do hereby urge the citizens of this community to recognize the merits of this cause by contributing generously to its support through the purchase of Buddy Poppies on the day set aside for distribution of these symbols of appreciation for the sacrifices of our honored dead. I urge all patriotic citizens to wear a Buddy Poppy as mute evidence of our gratitude to the men of 
men and women of this country who have risked their lives in defense of the freedoms which we continue to enjoy as American citizens. Council comments. Here, here. <laughs> Left or right? Just, John, let's start down here. I just wanted to, to thank uh, Councilman Delavar and Mayor Guard um, for going through this process of getting this ethics review committee going, um, that it was done in this fashion um, and, the, and the way it was laid out. I appreciate that a lot. It helped out in just being able to see all the facts on the table. So thank, thank you. you. Right. Paul? Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, this Saturday, uh, beginning at 10 until 2, what is called the Stream Team, which is put on by Clark Public Utilities, the City of Vancouver Parks, and Clark County Parks, with help from Department of Natural Resources, Department of Fish and Wildlife, a list as long as your arm, are going to put on a fair at Salmon Creek Park for Earth Day on Saturday the 23rd from 10 until 2. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I just wanted to mention uh, with regards to uh, clarifying something that we discussed a little bit earlier. I'll be brief about this because uh, we're just about done here. Um, with regards to interest rates that affect our decisions to buy now or not buy now, I can completely understand how seeing a low interest rate, especially for fixed interest rates, is an incredibly good thing. But the th one consideration to consider um, with regards to governments in general is that for the federal budget, we can see in the news lately that we've seen a lot of discussion about the federal budget and wrangling one way or the other and arguing over really minuscule amounts of cuts with regards to, I mean, just making the show about minuscule amounts. But if, if interest rates do truly rise, the portion of the federal budget which is dedicated to paying off interest on the debt is going to balloon significantly. And that is going to significantly impact everybody, whether our constituents who receive Social Security payments are going to have their um, uh, payments altered or adjusted or, you know, you know the raising of the age of eligibility, et cetera. Um, there are many different issues that are attendant to that, and I think that the very key that interest rates will rise is, um, or are very likely going to rise, is something that um, weighed heavily on my uh, decision uh, tonight with regards to the bond. However, I completely understand all the points that were brought forward and don't disagree with the um, persuasion, and I will yield the floor. Thank you, Michael. Jeffrey, anything? I don't have anything. Dave? Um, if I understood uh, Mrs. De Rocher on, uh, she used the term flip-flop, which I think is uh, pejorative, but uh, I think that you'll find that every council member here changes their vote on, on occasion uh, simply because of the reasoned arguments of their colleagues. And the colleagues are on both sides of this particular divide of the council. Uh, I have voted with the minority and against the minority on this council since I've been here, and I do that fairly frequently. So does everybody here. This is not a, a steady voting, voting block here. You can go either way depending on what the issue is, and everybody here goes both directions at some, at some point simply because they're trying to, to reach consensus on what's best for the city of uh, Washougal, not uh, to feather their own nest. Um, I share Councilman Delavar's uh, concerns about uh, the federal uh, situation. I note today that uh, Standard & Poor's put a negative outlook on the long-term AAA credit rating of the U.S. Sounding, uh, citing a material risk that the nation's leaders will fail to deal with the rising budget deficits and debt. I also note uh, that in at the state level here in Washington, we've got people who are actually uh, big spenders and they're actually starting to curtail some of that and they're becoming concerned about our situation here, which uh, proportionately is worse than the state of California, which is a disaster. Um, I'd like to bring that down to the local level. Uh, the administration is bringing forward a supplementary budget. 
uh, I handed it to them because last year they, they saved $350,000 through good management, hard decisions. Uh, but they want to, they brought forward a, a supplementary budget that wants to spend that plus what, 20%, Dave, of our reserves? Of the un, un uh, of the total discretionary reserves, correct? There'd still be other reserves, but of that one amount, it was roughly 20%, I believe. Okay. We'll clarify that next week. Okay. And I, and the reason I bring this up at this point is that, uh, I mentioned uh, when you put that on the table that uh, I would support it because I like the projects. Um, and you made a, a good case for the projects. I don't think it was a compelling case, but it was a darn good case. And all of these projects that come forward are good projects. They wouldn't be brought forward by, by the directors if they weren't. You can find something to love in every one of these things. You can find something that you want to vote for in every one of these things. Uh, but the fund amount of reserves is a concern for me. So uh, I mentioned that I would ask for a pound of flesh for my vote on that. And here's my pound of flesh. I would like to see this council and this administration commit to a three-year moratorium on the use of reserves to fund operating expenses. That's my pound of flesh. If you can meet that, I'll vote for your supplementary. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dave. From my standpoint, I wish I could give a triple-A rating to the council and staff for the for the uh, work that they've done in the last year, year and a half on helping us get to the point of having balanced budgets and being able to make sure that we're doing at the local level what we should be doing. So they've done a great job. Molly? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> actually, I would just like to comment on uh, Councilman Shoemaker's discussion points and that while I do believe that we have real cause for concern, with regards to the uh, federal spending and state spending, I think action really begins on the local level uh, with council, with staff, with citizens. And I think this is where the groundswell really starts. And I think I, I would compliment uh, staff and ma council members uh, and the mayor on doing a very good job of containing costs. And I would compliment citizens on understanding those obligations to contain costs and working with us to do that. So that's where we really start to make an, an impact on all of those state and federal mandates by working our way up and not working our way down. So, thanks. In December of 2009, the projection was that Washougal general fund budget would be $1.8 million short of revenue. At the end of 2010, we were a little over $300,000 in the positive. That's a, about a 20% swing in the general budget. Much congratulations are due to our owed to staff and the mayor for making that happen. On the other hand, it's also important to understand a little bit about the budgeting process. In 2009, the public works budget included the funds for major snow removal for two major storms. That happens almost never. But it's in the, it was in the budget to allow for that possibility. Under the new budget, we don't budget for those unexpected or unpredictable expenditures, which are operational expenditures. Instead, we carry them in reserves. We have moved all of those funds from those kinds of contingencies out of the budget and into a reserve, fu reserve funds, there are several, that are below the line. So a, c a commitment to not spend reserves on operations is a commitment to not plow snow, among other things. And so the, the budgeting situation is not simple. 
It's very complex. But the short of it is that we have a number of reserves which are, for, which are operational reserves and not just capital reserves. And so I just wanted to make that point. Thank you, Rod. Yeah, I also wanted to make a comment about the reserves. And, and it's just like at the beginning of the year when we pass a budget and we say, okay, we're not going to make any adjustments to it. We have a tight budget and we're not going to do it. And a budget adjustment is just a tool that we have available to us if we have to make these adjustments. And that's how I look at the reserves. I have no intentions of spending reserves and not being uh, diligent at, at, at saving them as long as we can. They're a tool and, and it's something, sometimes we have to do that. Um, I think this council makes good decisions on the whole as far as spending the money. But, uh, but I would never, ever support a moratorium on, on not spending some reserve money. Sometimes that's just the cost of doing business. Thank you. Other questions from council? Dave? We've been suffering that cost of doing business for the last three years. We've dipped into reserves every, every year for the last three years. Uh, we're now at the point where I don't think that's a good idea. I would entertain any uh, operating device which precluded us from doing that in the sept except in the case of emergencies. And I think uh, probably I could clarify my remark is I'm looking at the general fund reserve. I'm not looking at operating reserves. Thank you. Other items from council? Just general fund reserves are uh, operating reserves are general fund reserves. Streets, snow removal is part of general fund and is part of the general fund reserve. Okay, then we need to find a way to do it, and I'm open to finding that way. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. We've got a motion and a second to adjourn. <coughs> Any council discussion? <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you all. <laughs>